Okay, what we're going to do now, when bikes are delivered to the store or when they come in for their first service, the derailleur uh, throw adjustments will be out. Uh, that's the low gear and high gear settings on the front and the rear derailleur. We set those first and then we worry about cable tension. So to start with, we use a dummy pedal. Just goes in like a normal pedal would, without a thread, just so we can turn the crank without having to worry about putting pedals in. On the back of the derailleur, you have two screws, a H and an L screw. That's high and low. High is the setting on the smallest cog at the back here, which is obviously your highest gear. L is your lowest gear up the top of the cassette here. As we turn the crank over, we can just grab the exposed cable for the rear derailleur here and pull it up by hand. As you can see, it's got full range on the cassette. If I adjust the L screw and try that again, you'll hear it's just starting to not want to go into gear. Okay. So now if I pull the cable, we're missing two top gears and one bottom gear because I've wound both those screws in a couple of turns. What we do now, starting on the H screw, we pull the cable just to get the chain up the cassette a few cogs, release it and let it drop. Undo your screw, the H screw, about half a turn at a time and just repeat until you find it snap down onto the smallest cog in one smooth motion. Fraction more. As you get closer, just go to quarter or eighth of a turn. And that's the H screw set. Same with the L screw for your low gear. Pulling down and half a turn at a time. It's going up into the lowest gear now, but not as quickly as what we'd like it to. And that's the L screw set. Obviously we don't want the chain to go over the top of the cassette in the low range or down the bottom on the high range. The chain will just come off, jam up in the frame or the wheel, tearing the derailleur off, causing some major failure. Now we move on to cable tension. Once our limits are set, release the cable completely from the back of the derailleur. Make sure that it is in the lowest gear. That's applicable to mountain bikes, road bikes, doesn't matter what sort of gearing system it is. So just light pressure on the cable, change your pressure gear shifter until you get down to the lowest gear, then reattach your cable. Once we're set there, Whilst turning your crank, just one shift of the gears, and as you can see, nothing happened there. Didn't go up. Cable tension adjuster on the back of the derailleur, anti-clockwise, until it jumps up onto the second cog. Drop back down to the smallest gear, and repeat to make sure it goes back up. Wind the cable adjuster, until you hear it starting to want to go up into the third cog. Come back one and a half turns. Then we should have 
full range of gears. Up and down the cassette. That's rear derailleur adjustment. Okay, front derailleur adjustment. Just release the cable before you start the job and make sure just by moving it by hand that we've got clearance. Most new bikes will have this little sticker on there which gives you the clearance over the top of the teeth of the chain ring for the bottom of the front derailleur. Make sure that's fine. Once again on the lever, make sure that you're in the lowest gear. Light tension on the cable to make sure that that's pulled through. Pinch up the 5mm bolt. Okay. What we want to do here is set the high and low limit on the front derailleur. Now, typically these aren't stamped with a H and an L like the rear derailleur. They're pretty easy to work out. Okay, now if we move on the rear derailleur up into the lowest gear, we can see and we can hear the chain is contacting on the inner plate of the front derailleur. What we want to do there is maintain a one mil clearance between the chain and the, the derailleur plate on the inside when you're in the lowest gear at the back. Normally low is the inboard screw. Just anti-clockwise until we get that one mil clearance. Once again. Just run through the rear gears and make sure that we have that one mil clearance. Next we want to set the upper limit or the high screw for the front derailleur. So we need the rear derailleur in the 11 to or the smallest cog on the back of the cassette there. Now we can do this by hand is probably easiest because then we know what the actual upper limit is. So if we pull on the left hand cable running down the outside on the frame, as we're turning over, pull the chain, uh, the cable, till we go into the big ring. Once again we want to maintain one millimetre gap at its utmost point from the chain. As you can see it changes nicely up into the big ring with no hesitation. Now we just set the cable tension by moving the front derailleur over. A lot of the time you'll find that it won't clear, you won't end up with that one mil clearance even though you do when you pull that cable. Indexing through the shifter may not give it enough movement. What we do then, cable adjuster, this is rear derailleur, other side is front derailleur just adjust that anti-clockwise until the derailleur gets our one mil gap. Okay, the final check we need to do on the trim adjustment is the middle trim. So front derailleur, when we're in the smallest cog on the front and the smallest on the back, which isn't ideal to ride in, the chain will be crossed up and will actually foul on the outside plate of the front derailleur here. What we need to make sure is that with one click on the front derailleur, it's a trim position, it moves it across without wanting to put it up into the big ring. So as we're riding, we can hear that it's rubbing on that front derailleur there. One click over with the trim, which is all adjusted by our cable adjusters on the frame. Just want to make sure that it's not trying to jump up into the big cog and then the second position up into the big ring. Once that's done, we pull our stickers off. And we're good to go.